Once upon a time, there were three incredible mountain climbers who dared to challenge a fearsome peak in North America. Their names were David Lama, Anjo Gower, and Jess Ross Kelly, and they were celebrated worldwide for their extraordinary climbing abilities. Little did they know that their quest to conquer the daunting east wall of House Peak would lead them to an unimaginable tragedy. So what unfolded during this ill-fated adventure? Let's unravel the details in this video. David Lama, perhaps the most famous of these three adventurers, born in Austria in 1990, his Nepal mountain guide father and Austrian mother's love of culture inspired his mountain obsession. He was gifted at climbing from a young age and at just five, David had attended a climbing camp led by Himalayan veteran Peter Hobbler, who had climbed Everest without oxygen. Hobbler had called David a prodigy and reminded his parents of his amazing talent. Similarly, Andrew Gower, another significant player in the tragic narrative, was from Zams in Austria's Tyrolean Alps. Born in 1984, Andrew was raised in the highlands and loved climbing. The 2007 fish route solo on Marmalada's south face in the Dolomites was Hanjo's breakthrough. It was the first time such a difficult path had been completed in under three hours. Jess Ross Kelly, another prodigy, completed this trinity of outstanding climbers. Jess's father, John Ross Kelly, was a famous climber who had ascended both Everest and K2. Jess had begun climbing alongside his father at a young age, earning his reputation. He also broke the world record by becoming the youngest American to climb Everest at 20. Later, he climbed Denali, Chaoyo, and Mount Huntington, earning endorsements from the North Face and La Sportiva boots. Unfortunately, Jess's faith would change on April 16, 2019. How did that happen despite the trio being highly competitive in mountaineering? Let's find out. So arriving in Canada in early April 2019, the trio's goal was to conquer new routes on iconic peaks in the Canadian Rockies. After triumphing over the Andromeda strain on Mount Andromeda and Mount Alberta, their gaze shifted towards the formidable House Peak. Rising as the tallest peak in the Waputik Mountains, House Peak presented an intimidating challenge. Its east wall, standing a thousand feet above a glacier, was a treacherous ascent known for avalanches, falls, and adverse weather conditions. A steep and intricate wall, it had been climbed just once before in 1999 by a team including Steve House and Barry Blanchard. They named their route M16, a designation indicating extreme difficulty and high risk. On that fateful morning on April 16th, the seasoned climbers embarked on their ascent, blissfully unaware of the tragic turn their adventure would take. Anjo took the lead, surmounting a frozen waterfall. Scaling a ledge, they stared up at the complex wall that lay ahead. David, drawn by curiosity, opted for a distinct route, deviating from the path of previous climbers. After traversing left along a snow edge, he conquered a steep slope. Jess and Hanjo followed suit, determined to overcome the challenges. Just as they crossed another snow line, the trio caught sight of a glittering waterfall above them. This was the King Line, an uncharted, mixed line that beckoned to be conquered. With David leading the way, Jess and Hanjo followed in close pursuit. Their climb of the waterfall was exhilarating, marking the conquering of the most difficult segment of the route. With smiles on their faces and hearts brimming with pride, they emerged from the waterfall, though there were still 450 meters left to conquer. Their confidence was at an all-time high, Another snow ridge awaited them, guiding their path upward. Their journey continued as David Lama's group navigated a 30-meter wide snow channel, eventually reaching the southwest ridge. Jess's leadership guided them up a challenging mixed slope along the ridge, ultimately resulting in a successful summit at an elevation of 3,295 meters. It was a moment of celebration, a testament to their determination and skill. Little did they know that fate was about to alter their course in unimaginable ways. Clouds rolled in as they began their descent. Choosing to retrace their steps along the M16 route they had triumphed over. Suddenly, without warning, disaster struck in the form of a colossal avalanche. The ground beneath them trembled as the avalanche cascaded down upon them. In the face of this sudden onslaught, the climbers could only brace themselves for the impact. Jess managed to drive his ice axe 
into the ice with all his might, a last ditch effort to anchor himself against the relentless force of the avalanche. But it was a futile attempt. The avalanche overwhelmed him, tearing him from his perch. Falling six meters, the rope connected his ice axe and loop tightened around his shoulders, momentarily arresting his fall. However, the avalanche's brute force shattered the shaft of the ice axe, cutting his connection to safety. David and Hanjo, too, fought valiantly, plunging their ice tools into the ice in a desperate bid to hold on. However, given the circumstances, it's likely they weren't connected to their tools. In fact, neither David nor Hanjo had utilized hand straps for this climb. When Jess's body was later discovered, two ropes were found tightly ensnaring his torso and legs. Hanjo lacked the rope, possessing only his ice axe and crampons. As for David, he was ensnared in a tangle of ropes, indicating his attempt to secure himself to the wall. Jess's body also bore the marks of being bound, hinting at his desperate attempts to arrest his friend's fall. Yet, against the relentless power of nature, their efforts proved in vain. The avalanche carried them down the gully and over a precipice, ultimately depositing them in a snow basin at the base of another route known as Life by the Drop. The unfolding tragedy did not go unnoticed. Quentin Roberts, a Canadian climber who had admired their feet from a distance, was an unintentional witness to the disaster. Having parked his car along the ice fields parkway, he and his partner had ventured to the base of the mountain. Their purpose was to observe the east face when they witnessed a threatening cloud of snow coming from a gully. Reacting quickly, Quentin retrieved his camera and captured an image of the avalanche just 30 minutes after Hanjo had taken a celebratory selfie with David at the gully summit. Unbeknownst to Quentin, the three climbers were trapped beneath the snow, and he mistakenly assumed they had safely completed their descent. Jess was expected to communicate with his wife, Ali, by the morning of April 17th, a communication that could never happen. Fearing the worst, Jess's father, John Ross Kelly, reached out to the Mountain Rescue Services, urging them to launch a search. Clouds still covered the upper part of the mountainside, hampering the rescue helicopter's effort. It wasn't until the third flight that one of two figures were spotted on the avalanche slope beneath life by the drop. Partially buried in snow, the bodies were distinguishable. The instability and difficult conditions of the slope prevented a direct landing, meaning that there had to be a waiting period until conditions improved. Finally, on April 21st, the rescue team descended with the aid of an avalanche dog, embarking on the painstaking process of digging through the snow. The trio of climbers, Jess, David, and Hanjo, were found closely clustered together. The ropes that had entangled them were carefully cut, releasing them from their frozen tomb. Then, the fallen climbers were reunited with their families and friends, marking the culmination of this harrowing chapter. Various possessions were also recovered from the scene, cameras, Jess Ross Kelly's iPhone, and a GPS device. These items played a pivotal role in the hands of Jess's father, John Ross Kelly. Armed with his son's belongings and his own decades of climbing experience, John embarked on the intricate task of reconstructing Jess's final journey. Using location pictures and his wealth of knowledge, John crafted a detailed report chronicling the team's ascent, the challenges they encountered, and the tragic events that unfolded during their descent. This meticulous crafted account not only serves as a tribute to Jess and his fellow climbers, but also stands as a valuable resource for future adventurers, offering a comprehensive understanding of the House Peak expedition. News of the House Peak disaster echoed through the mountaineering community, leaving shock and grief in its wake. Three of the most accomplished and revered alpinists, Jess Ross Kelly, David Lama, and Hanjo Gower, had fallen victim to an avalanche while descending a new route on the mountain's east face. Mourning their loss, family, friends, and admirers gathered at various locations to honor their memory. In the aftermath of the tragedy, the mountaineering community engaged in deep introspection about the essence of climbing, its inherent risk, and the rewards it brings. The loss of these three remarkable climbers prompted a range of emotions among their peers. Sadness, shock, confusion, and a renewed appreciation for the sport's challenges. 
Amidst their grief, climbers were reminded of life's fragility and the immense power of nature. The House Peak disaster left an indelible mark on the world of mountaineering, forever serving as a reminder of the heights humans can reach and the unforgiving forces they contend with. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. For similar content, feel free to have a look at your screen. Until then, ciao.